Uh, I had um had a lot of thoughts this weekend when I met up with a couple friends of mine. <clears throat> it's something really simple. It's uh, about Black History Month, which is the month of February. And being the color skin that I am, I hear all kinds of crazy things. And there's a lot of people that think that Black History Month isn't really important. And when I went to school, there was no such thing. So you, 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 you never had that. But as I've gotten older, I've come to realize the significance of having a month set aside um, for the contributions that African Americans have made to American history, and I'll be honest, I, I really didn't, I really didn't uh, know uh, much until you know, I started to actually research it, look at various people throughout uh, history, various Black people who've made huge contributions in this country. Some simple things that you wouldn't think of, like the stoplight, was invented by a Black man. Um, something you see every day but nobody gives any consideration to my my I have no problems with this being taught in school and I think it should be taught in school because the majority of Caucasian people seem to think that we are superior we watch the news we see all these barbaric things that seem to happen in the uh, African American community, whether they're these dumb fights in restaurants uh, uh, taken by uh, uh, people with uh, cell phones <clears throat> and post them on YouTube, and then you read the comments, read the comments. You know, one black couple in there goes crazy, everybody starts fighting, and then every, the next thing you know, all kinds of horrible things are being said. Um, there is racism in this country. There is discrimination in this country. And it is skin-based. And the reality is, is I don't think many white people even bother to consider it because they're not friends with any black people. And I'm not talking about, you know, smiling at your co-worker. I'm talking about none of, very few of you that are this skin color bother to be personal friends with someone that is of, African heritage, so to speak. And I have a unique perspective on this because I was engaged to a black woman, much to my family's chagrin, I might add. But it didn't matter to me. Love doesn't know color. Love doesn't see color. And you can't truly judge people. You're, we're going to judge people on the actions of some morons and some and, and some some dumb little barbarians because there's plenty of barbarians all right and they come in every color they come in every color it don't matter whether brown yellow red there's always fools and being engaged to a black woman you get a different perspective on life you, you really do you you get comments and you'd be surprised and, you, and it's on both sides of the fence White people don't just stare at you. Well, they generally stare at you, and, and you can tell what they're thinking when they look at you. But then you'll get some ignorant black guys that will come up to you and, and be rude enough to just, you know, say something to the woman you're with about who she's chose to be with. So don't, you know, racism is on both sides of the fence. It doesn't matter what color you are. Racism is on both sides of the fence. We would have a much better country. If every person in this country became very good, close, personal friends with somebody who didn't have the same skin color as they do. And I think that um, that's sorely missing. It is sorely missing here in this nation. We would have a much better nation if people did that. You, what you don't realize is if I wouldn't, it, it would suck. Uh, quite honestly, it's got to suck being black. I would hate to be a black man and every store you walk into, there's people watching you and following you around because they think you're going to rip them off. I've experienced this. I have black male friends and some of I, I, I consider my brothers. And you walk in a store with them. One of them, is an, one of them is an engineer. One of them is an engineer. And you walk into a store with them and you see people follow you around. When I walk in a store, I've never seen anybody follow me around, but I've watched it. I've seen it. 
you know what? And, 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 and some of this stuff has got to end. We automatically look at somebody. We make a judgment call on the color of their skin. And we, we and, and, and you guys do it. You know, in the workplace, you know, you're all friendly to the black guy or the black woman. And behind their back, you're using the N-word. Come on, man. I've seen it. I had an altercation with a young lady over the summer who was a little drunk. And she decided to start throwing the N-word out there like there was no tomorrow. And I, I, I tolerated it at first. But eventually I kind of turned around and said, hey, you know, can you, can you, I find the word offensive. You know, could you, could you please cut it out? And she gets all apologetic and she says to me, Oh, you know, I got black friends, and I didn't mean anything by it. And she keeps going on and on and on. And I, I tried several times just to get her to shut up. And eventually I had to just literally turn around and say, Look, I was engaged to a black woman. I don't like how you're talking. So just shut the hell up. Just shut up. And she kept trying to say something. I said, Shut, shut, that. no, no more. This is the dumb stuff I see. And the funny thing about being white, at least looking white. I'm not really white. My last name is Cruz, like in Penelope, not Tom. So you, you, people think they're safe expressing their little racist comments around you. And, and then you, you, I see it. <clears throat> and it might be good with everybody else. It isn't with me. It's not with me. Look, I'm as conservative as they come. You cut me and I bleed blue. I'm as as conservative Christian as it comes. But nobody is ever going to say that I'm a racist or a bigot. I might have strong opinions of it. And there's going to be some people that are, that, are, that are listening to this. Some who know me personally. Know me quite well. And they can vouch for me. And, and, and there's going to be people that are just going to see that, nah, this guy is all goofy. But the reality is it, it makes me sad. Because we would have such a much better place. Something simple as you sitting with somebody of a different color at the lunch table makes a huge difference. Taking the time not just to be friendly but to befriend somebody to actually show a little bit of concern. Because let me tell you, black folk have got their own struggles. They have their own struggles. And it's not easy. I really can't see it being easy being in it. It's harder to, it's harder to succeed in, in, the, in the workplace. It's harder to succeed educationally. There's a social and peer pressure that most of us white folk do not understand. Um, I've seen it. And, and, and the black folk know it too. At least the honest ones do. And there's a lot of hatred across the board. A lot of finger pointing. A lot of blaming. And it's a shame. And it does not have to be that way. It really, really doesn't. So I have uh, three friends in particular. Two of them are old enough to be my father. And one, eh, an older brother. They come from different walks of life. One's an engineer. Uh, one was a construction worker. The other guy was a, uh, a teacher. And uh, these guys have contributed to my life. In the short time that I've known them, about maybe a year, year and a half, these guys have contributed more to my life than every white person I've known in my life. And that is not an understatement. That really isn't. It, 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 it. Spend time with them. Spend time with their families. See the things, the unique struggles they got to. You know, these guys with the, the highest educations. And, and, and black women? Oh. Let me tell you something. You can have all the opinions you want about black women. They have unique struggles, more so than the men, particularly if they're professional black women and trying to make it in a, in, in a, in a white man's world run by professional white men. I once knew a young woman, young black woman, who was a, an architect, and she could not get a job. She was very talented. She kept losing the jobs to these pretty little blonde chicks. Now, I know why. I, I first didn't believe it, but then I started to think about it. The reason she kept losing those jobs is because the guys hiring 
wanted a cute little blonde to look at in the workplace. They wanted a cute little blonde that they could flirt with. They wanted a cute little blonde that they could try to hook up with and cheat on their wives with. You know, cute little young thing. But, you know, here she is, you know, in her early 30s. And she's a nice looking woman. You know, by, by at least, probably by African American standards, she's really nice looking. Most white guys probably wouldn't have given her a second glance. And that's the other problem with white men. Most of them don't think black women are attractive unless they look like Halle Berry or Beyonce. And let me tell you, particularly guys, uh, they're still women. The parts are still the same. They may be a little bit different colored, but the parts are still the same. So you can't discount them. You spend time with them. You, you end up having a real relationship with, 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 with people from a different color. And the cultures and the background may be a little bit different. And there may be things you like and there may be things you don't like. But it goes that way with us too. It goes that way with us too. Um, and I think you could say that about any type of a culture that you grow up in. And whether it be... Irish or Polish or Northern European, Eastern European, whatever. Everybody's got stuff. Everybody's got stuff. But we live in a country where we are forced to get along with each other. And there are things that we should try to embrace. There are things we should try to embrace, things that we should learn to get along with, particularly get along with each other. Whether it's cross religious lines or color lines or cultural lines. And... We need to accept the differences. It doesn't mean we always tolerate some of the craziness in, in the behavior. I think there should be standards with some of this stuff. But we all know that. No one, everybody wants to live safely. Everybody wants to have good neighbors. Trust me. Trust me about the good neighbor thing. I'm really, I, it, it, it wonders about good neighbors. So, um, my, I want to encourage people. Anybody who sees this, to take a step of faith, to walk out and, 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 and befriend somebody that doesn't look like you. We transcend color. You know, one of my favorite things about Jesus is he's never, it's never mentioned what he looked like. And that was deliberate. Because he knew that people would gravitate around how he looked and people would elevate him by how he looked. And scripture says that there was nothing becoming about his physical appearance that would draw men to him. Which means he was probably ordinary. Matter of fact, he was so ordinary, he had to be betrayed with a kiss in a garden to separate the difference between him and the 12 other guys. And I, I've gone into African-American homes, and here's this picture of Jesus looking like he stepped out of, uh, like he stepped off the Ivory Coast. And then you go into the, into, into the Polish home, and, and Jesus is this blonde-haired, blue-eyed guy just glowing. The reality is, Jesus was probably Middle Eastern looking. Okay. But would it matter? Would it matter if Jesus was Japanese? And particularly for Christians, particularly for Christians, this is a strong message. Because church is the most segregated place in the nation. Sunday morning is the most segregated place in the nation. If you go to church, you're a church going, you go to your church, and everybody looks like you, there's a problem. Now maybe that's your neighborhood, I understand that. But if you live in an area that has a little bit of diversity, eh, maybe you should find another church. Maybe you should try interacting with people that don't quite look like you. Because you know what? It's going to be like that someday. Every tribe, every nation. You know, you guys know what I'm talking about. Scripture says there is no slave, there's no free, there's no male, there's no female, there's no Jew, there's no Gentile, that all are one in Christ. A lot of equality right there. Okay, if you're non-Christians, eh, you don't have to subscribe to that. So you can be as hateful and crazy as you want to be. As long as you don't tread on anybody else. And, you know, the one thing you got to remember about us radical, crazy, um, conservative Christian guys, eh, we really don't care for violence too much perpetrated against us. So, you know, we kind of bite back too. And I don't think any of us care what color somebody is. Point being... The reality is about love. The reality is to reach out, touch. And I think that's really important. It's something to think about. Reach out, touch somebody that doesn't quite look like you. Touch their hearts. Be an example. Till next time, peace, love, 